In this video from Reference Home Theater, we are analyzing the quality of the HDR and wide color gamut use on the 4K Blu-ray release of Pan. Pan was shot digitally on cameras from Ari and RED, and was one of the earlier 4K HDR discs, but has been a title that reviewers have used since it first came out. For our analysis, we are concerned about two things, peak nits and color gamut, which we inspect using the waveform and CIE charts shown here. The waveform shows the nit levels of pixels in the frame, and anything above 200 nits we consider to be an HDR highlight that would likely be clipped or lacking the same impact in the SDR version of this film. The CIE chart has two inner triangles. The REC 2020 triangle shows all the colors that can be stored on a 4K Blu-ray disc, while the smaller REC 709 triangle shows all the colors that are in SDR content. Pixels that fall outside the REC 709 triangle are colors that you wouldn't see on the SDR version and a visible improvement on the 4K HDR Blu-ray. Early on, we see a dark, dreary street, but with some street lights that are putting out at 1,000 nits of brightness. The color gamut here is very restrained, but the use of HDR makes the image nice and dynamic, despite the dreary overall tone. Here we see explosions that are well over 1,000 nits, with the peaks here coming in close to 2,700 nits in brightness. It also pushes past the REC 709 color gamut with rich oranges and reds, unlike the washed out explosions we would see with SDR content. This is pushing past what all but the most expensive TVs can do today, and way past what SDR could do. This is a scene that I've used for years when testing HDR displays as there's a small bit of content around 2,000 nits that's very color saturated and tends to wash out. I've disabled tone mapping from HDR to SDR here, otherwise the highlights would be completely washed out in this video. The color gamut actually stays inside of SDR, which surprised me, but it uses HDR really well here, and is prone to showing issues with tone mapping on HDR TVs. This is as close as I can get to a shot that doesn't use HDR or wide color gamut in some way during pan. There is still a little bit outside of the REC 709 gamut, but peak nits are way below 200 here. Just a few frames before or after this, however, and you'll find HDR and wide color gamut being used extensively, so I really had to hunt for this. This scene jump cuts between two different shots that emphasize different things. The shots of Hook use HDR to have a bright, natural-looking sky, while the images of the crowd use the full DCI color gamut. Captain Hook's sash does have a pop of red that falls outside of Rec. 709, but these shots are using all of the benefits of 4K HDR Blu-ray in two different ways. When we get to the jungle, we see greens and yellows that fall way outside of the Rec. 709 color gamut, and also some highlights that are pushing 1000 nits on the waveform. We have HDR and wide color gamut working together to create a far more vivid and dynamic image than you can get from SDR. Here is a dark scene that still benefits because you have a fire that is around 900 nits but only occupies a tiny section of the screen, so you would need a full array local dimming LCD TV or an OLED to really see it at full brightness. We also have lots of greens and blues with a touch of red that are taking advantage of the extra color gamut offered to us on 4K HDR Blu-ray. The bright, vivid costumes and makeup are pushing all the way to the edges of the DCI color gamut here, and the blues and greens push past it, while that string of lights on the right side is meant to be between 300 and 1000 nits in brightness. Once again, this is a challenging test for any TV, and one that no current TV on the market can actually show ideally in my opinion. In conclusion, it's easy to see all the benefits that Pan on 4K Blu-ray derives from using HDR and wide color gamut. It has highlights all through the movie that are meant to pop off the screen, though often very small in size. From the costumes to the visual effects, the full DCI color gamut is used, and we even go past it into full Rec 2020 from time to time. So as TVs can start to display those colors, the film is going to look even better. I've used Pan for testing for years now because of how bright and vivid it was, which could really push a TV to its limits. Now that I've analyzed it, I can see my assumptions about that were correct, and I will continue to use it for testing. It's a great disc for pushing what a high-end TV can do. It has lots of scenes with very bright colors that test the tone mapping of TVs, and has shown me how great the internal tone mapping of something like the Panasonic 4K Blu-ray players are when compared to most TVs. 
This is truly one of the best discs out there for showing off your HDR TV. If you've enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe below, and leave a comment about future movies you would like us to examine. Thank you for watching.